after your exercise in translation, you should be able to look at genetic code tables and go from the messenger RNA to the corresponding amino acid. You should understand the concept of a codon and an anticodon. And you should be able to take a piece of RNA and translate it conceptually into protein. You should also know the direction of protein synthesis that we discussed before, but it should now be very clear in your mind. So what we've done today is to take DNA, we've discussed how it is precisely replicated using the rules of nucleic acid, three prime end addition, complementarity, anti-parallelism. We've talked about how DNA is turned into RNA by transcription, and we've talked about how RNA is then turned into the completely different language of protein. We care about this deeply because the proteins, and sometimes the RNAs, are final products of genes. They are what makes the cell work. They are what makes the organs of the body work. They are what makes you and me work. So the final products are essential for life or very useful for life. That is why we care about this whole information transfer. Let's end off today's discussion by going through one more example from gene to protein. Let's start off with a piece of double-stranded DNA, 5 prime ATG, G, AA, G, C, T. Just checking my notes here. The complementary strand, you now know, do it with me, T, A, C, C, T, T, C, G, A, 5 prime. If we make this bottom strand, the template strand, but as you know, I could have made the top strand the template strand. It's just a matter of convenience that I've done it this way. The RNA that comes out will be the complement of this template DNA strand. It will be A, U, G, G, A, A, G, C, U. There's a little trick here I want to tell you. The sequence of the RNA is actually the same as the non-template strand sequence. And if you ever need that on a problem set or you, some other reason, you should remember that. So the RNA looks like the non-template strand, except that there are U's instead of T's. Okay. And now we can take this RNA <clears throat> and we can divide it into codons and we can translate it. AUG, GAA, GCU, and the protein that will come out of this translation, methionine, lysine, threonine. And these are covalently joined together. The direction of the strand of protein from amino to carboxy end. This is what you should know by this point, and you should know the various rules by which these different aspects of information transfer in biology work. So to summarize what we've talked about today, we've talked about the gene and DNA rules, we've talked about DNA replication and transcription, and then we culminated this all with a discussion of translation. You're well on your way now to understanding some of the basics in biology and to start to understand how you can un figure out which gene does what and when genes are abnormal or mutated, what the outcomes are going to be. And we'll talk about that kind of thing next time. <laughs>